And um, you know, the problem that we face is that um, most of the political elite, the political correct politicians, see Islam as a religion, mm -hmm. like Christianity, mm -hmm. like Judaism. And my point is that it's not. I mean, you are, you are being labeled as a xenophobe or a racist if you say that it's not to be compared, but I strongly believe it. This is the cultural relativism, the, the biggest disease in the free Western world today that I was talking about. Islam, and this is one of the reasons I'm standing in court in Holland uh, today, um, I said that the Quran could be compared to Mein Kampf. And it was only, not only a comparison of books. If you look at, um, at Christianity, and if you compare it with Judaism or um, um, Islam, you will see that they are not leaves of the same tree. You will see that Islam is an ideology, a, 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 a totalitarian ideology, because it wants to rule every aspect, not only of one's life, but also of a whole society. And this makes it, with 500 other reasons, not comparable with Christianity or with Judaism. So it makes it more comparable with other totalitarian ideologies like communism or fascism, where if you were not a communist, you were wrong. Like if you were in Nazi Germany, you were not a national socialist or fascist, you were wrong. While in Islam, if you are not a Muslim, if you are a Kufa, you are wrong and you will be expelled or killed or the worst things will happen to you. So we should, we should not make Islam a part of the freedom of religion, which is very difficult. We have in Holland, as part of our constitution, um, the freedom of education. You probably have it in your constitution as well. And what I find most of the most disturbing things is that we have in Holland Islamic schools. The worst thing that a society can have, that you can have young children, young girls and young boys who you want later to integrate, to assimilate in your society, to get be educated in a system of apartheid, where they, their heads are being filled with all the crazy things and the hatred of the Quran. This is something we should stop. So I advocate a stop, a total stop immediately and a closure of all Islamic schools in Holland. And the argument, the argument that is used against me is that I discriminate because they have a right under the freedom of education. And I tell them that I always learned that you only have to treat equal things that are equal. And Islam is not equal to Christianity and Judaism. And I have not a problem with Christian schools. And I have not a problem with schools that are based on uh, Judaism. But I have a problem with Islamic schools. So the only solution we have is to make sure that people start to believe and to get the discussion going that Islam is not so much a religion but an ideology. Sure, it has a temple, it has a holy book, it has a god, so it has religious aspects, but that's about 5%. 95% of Islam is an evil totalitarian ideology and we should start treating it as such. Should you say your name? I'm Zane Handy Sides from Windsor. Um, I'm really concerned about the major news media here in North America. A simple example, in Ontario, we have a Muslim <coughs> terrorist training camp. It's been in business for the last four years. Go on the internet, you can find it. There's 35 of them throughout the United States. Some of them are financed by a sheik from Pakistan named Jelani. This uh, this information is not being made public. People that care about our society aren't getting a chance to get mad because the media is not telling us what's going on. And I'm sick of it. Excuse me. Can you put your question to Mr. Wilders? Yes. What is, is this the, uh, is the news media muzzling the problem in Europe as, as bad or worse than it is here? Uh, can you answer that? Well. Uh, it's probably worse in Holland, but <laughs> I don't know how it is. You know, the media, uh, to, be, to be honest, the media indeed um, is an enormous problem. In Holland we have, um, as you probably have, uh, public uh, state-subsidized TV, 
and 99% of it is leftish and liberal and they will not make any reports about the things you mentioned. We have um, commercial TV and commercial media, but they are only interested in quizzes and um, soaps and uh, other things. <laughs> so the only thing you can do is to get uh, political support. Because um, when I was not a member of parliament, and I tried to make public and expose many of those things, it was very difficult to do. But if you have a political force, and you can speak about it in parliament, and you can give interviews about it, there was no alternative for the media to do that. And so, the things that I believe is the most important thing to do is to find and to elect politicians with guts. <coughs> they are there. They must be there. Give them no excuses. And they have a lot of support. My party, like I said, in Holland has between 15 and 20 percent of the vote. There was a survey in Germany not so long ago that proved that if a party like my party for freedom, something like that, would emerge in Germany, they would get 20 percent of the vote. In the United Kingdom, a similar survey showed that if there would be a democratic party, not like the British National Party, which really is a racist party, would start, they would get 20% of the vote. Believe me, people like yourself are in increasingly numbers fed up with what is happening and the fact that it's not exposed and it's being put under the carpet. So find, find, please, this is my a very important advice, find your politicians and make them expose as they can, as nobody else can. Mr. Wilders, how many more questions would you like to take? I, how, are you doing how many more are there? Yeah. I see three people in line. Okay, three. Okay, over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do want to be respectful of Mr. Wilders' sure. time, and I know he's traveling, he's got a schedule, so we're going to limit it to, uh, we, and we do have to have some closing remarks from, from our release. So let's just let's see how we do. Over there. Please state your name. Good evening. My name is Scott Mayer. Um, and my question for Mr. Wilders is that you've compared Islam with Nazism, and there are similarities, for example, anti-Semitism, racism, uh, but what other similarities do Nazism and Islam have? Well, um, you mentioned a very important one. There was a study by uh, Bill Warner, an American professor, and um, it, for instance, showed that if you look at anti-Semitism, the Quran, and more especially the Medina part of the Quran, was, um, contains far more anti-Semitism um, than Mein Kampf. But, um, um, so this is a very important thing. But the fact, um, um, what I want, the point that I want to make with the comparison of those, between those two books is that they both represent a totalitarian ideology. And what is a totalitarian ideology? It's an ideology that what, if you don't adhere to that ideology, um, 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 you are in big trouble. This was with communism, this was with fascism, and it is what Sam uh, Solomon spoke so um, um, truthfully about just now. If you are Kufa, you have no rights. You either are um, um, subjected to Islam or you are killed. And this is what all, I could have as easily uh, have been compared uh, uh, a book of uh, communism with uh, um, uh, the Quran or with Mein Kampf. All totalitarian ideologies share the concept that if you don't belong to them, it's over with you. And this is the comparison I try to make. Please uh, go to the microphone and state your name. Uh, my, <coughs> my name is Mark Mercer. Uh, I'm, uh, Can we get the mic down there, please? <coughs> Hello? Go ahead. Yeah, my name is Mark Mercer. I, um, I'm, I'm, I really don't like to hear talk of um, uh, restrictions on immigration. Um, Restrictions on on, on dress, uh, restrictions on um, um, well, restrictions uh, generally. Uh, uh, the, the, you don't like restrictions. I don't like restrictions. It strikes me as it strikes me as anti-liberal, and I'm I'm wondering why you think um, a, uh, a renewed emphasis on assimilation and um, liberal values like uh, freedom of expression, um, a, a concern uh, for um, individual autonomy. Um, why that's not enough? Um, I, I don't know about the Dutch uh, that case, I can't speak to that. But I would think that in Canada, um, we wouldn't need to impose restrictions on 
Moss building. <laughs> Am I wrong? Why not? Uh, let's let's please put the, allow the question to be put. Go yeah. ahead. Well, why not simply a renewed emphasis on assimilation and liberal values like freedom of expression? Why wouldn't that be sufficient? Well, um, you use your freedom of speech, so I respect every question um, you ask me. Um, but um, you have to be—I um, have to be honest about it. What you're saying is is, is is totally wrong. If you, as a matter of fact, would not restrict um, the immigration in Canada will happen what is happening in Europe today. The Islamization process will continue even more. There are many surveys that show that the more Islam you get in a society, the less freedom you will get. So if we really want to fight for our freedom, if we really want to stand for our identity, for our values, and the values that are based on, on, on Christianity, on Judaism, are really, when you look at how you treat women, how you treat apostates, the separation of church and state, are totally different, like water and fire, between our culture and the Islamic culture. So if you would be, I don't know if you are, if you would be a cultural relativist, and you would say it doesn't really matter in which country I live, it doesn't really matter if my children are, um, um, uh, will grow up, with perhaps a burqa on uh, or not, if they will be enslaved by their men, if there will be polygamy, if there will be genital mutilation, if there will be honor killings, if apostates should be killed. If you really don't care about that, your way is the way. But I do care about that. I don't want that. I want that we stay a free country. I, want, I am proud of the identity that we have and I will fight everybody who wants to change it. So I fight Islam and it's the only way to do it. I want to ask one last question myself, and then I'm going to call Roy Leishman to come up and say his final remarks, so if you can get ready. I thought there were three of us. I, I'm, I'm, we're, we're almost out of time, and I want to be respectful of the time, but I, but if, I don't know if Mr. Villas can stick around. It's, it's almost 9 o'clock, and we did promise to wrap things up. And it's a, just a very brief question. I have heard in the past that you've called for the Quran itself to be banned, and this is on the, in, uh, yeah. do you, do you believe in, uh, do you still believe that, and how do you reconcile that with your comments about freedom of speech? Yes, that's a, that's, that's a very good question. Indeed, I asked, I think it was three or four years ago, in the Dutch Parliament, I put forward a resolution, a motion, as we call it, to ban the Quran. And you have to see that, because I'm not in the habit of banning books, it would be on the contrary of, indeed, of freedom of speech, mm -hmm. in the Dutch context. Because in the Netherlands, a few decades ago, uh, my Kampf was outlawed. And my Kampf was, out, was outlawed for certain articles of our penal code. And at that time, uh, when the Dutch Supreme Court said uh, that my Kampf should only be allowed for, uh, in universities for studies and things like that, but not uh, being sold in bookshops anymore, the left and the liberals in Holland applauded that decision. They said, it's such a good thing that this terrible book cannot be sold anymore because it's, it's, a, it's a terrible book. So now I thought, well, look if they, are, if they have any double standards. So I went forward to Parliament and I said, here I have another book. It's even worse than the book that you applauded so much a few decades ago and you never asked since then um, um, to overrule the ban of uh, selling it. So if you are, if you don't have any double standards, now you must support me in my resolution to also ban uh, the Quran. But of course, it was total silent uh, in uh, Parliament. Nobody spoke, they only said that I was a crazy guy wanting to ban uh, the Quran. So what I really tried to do, and of course this motion was rejected, and we went uh, on with uh, normal uh, other polit uh, politici politic uh, things, but um, uh, what I tried to do with this proposal was to expose uh, the left that with the same articles that my camp was banned, they should also support the banning of the Quran, and by not doing so, they proved who they really were.